After supper, Atticus sat down with the paper and called, Scout, ready to read? The Lord sent me more than I can bear, and I went to the front porch. Atticus followed me. Something wrong, Scout? I told Atticus I didn't feel very well and didn't think I'd go to school anymore if that was all right with him. Atticus sat down in the swing and crossed his legs. His fingers wandered to his watch pocket, and he said that was the only way he could think. He waited in amiable silence, and I sought to reinforce my position. You never went to school, and you turned out all right, so I'll just stay home too. You can teach me like Granddaddy taught you and Uncle Jack. No, I can't, said Atticus. I have to make a living. Besides, they put me in jail if I kept you at home. Dose of Agnesia for you tonight in school tomorrow. I'm feeling all right. Really? Thought so. Now what's the matter? Bit by bit, I told him the day's misfortunes. And she said, you taught me all wrong. So we can't ever read anymore. Ever. Please don't send me back. Please, sir. Atticus stood up and walked to the end of the porch. When he completed his examination of the Wisteria Vine, he strolled back to me. First of all, he said, If you can learn a simple trick, Scout, you'll get along a lot better with all kinds of folks. You never really understand a person until you consider things from their point of view. Sir, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. So this quote right here from Atticus is the main reason why I chose this piece because I agree with this point of view in that you shouldn't be able to judge someone until you know what they're going through and you've walked a day in their shoes. Atticus said, I had learned many things today and Miss Caroline had learned several things herself. She had learned not to hand something to a Cunningham for one thing. But if Walter and I had put ourselves in her shoes, we'd have seen it was an honest mistake on her part. We could not expect her to learn all Macon's ways in one day, and we could not hold her responsible when she knew no better. I'll be dogged, I said. I didn't know any better than not to read to her, and she held me irresponsible. Listen, Atticus, I don't have to go to school. I was bursting with a sudden thought. Burus Ewell, remember, he goes to school the first day. The truant lady reckons she's carried out the law when she gets his name on the roll. You can't do that, Scout, Atticus said. Sometimes it's better to bend the law a little in a special ca in special cases. In your case, the law rem remains widget, rigid. So the school, so to school you must go. I don't see why I have to when he doesn't. Then listen. Atticus said the Ewells had been the disgrace of Bacon for three generations. None of them had done an honest day's work in his recollection. He said that some Christmas, when he was getting rid of the tree, he would take me with him and show me where and how they lived. They were people, but they lived like animals. They can go to school anytime they want, when they show the faintest symptom of wanting an education, said Atticus. There are ways of keeping them in school by force, but it's silly to force people like the Ewells into a new environment. If I didn't go to school tomorrow, you'd force me to? Let's leave it at this, said Atticus drearily. You, Miss Scout Finch, are one of the common folk. You must obey the law. He said that the Ewells were members of an exclusive society made up of Ewells. In certain circumstances, the common folk judiciously allowed them certain privileges by the simple method of becoming blind to some of the Ewells' activities. They didn't have to go to school for one thing. Another thing, Mr. Bob Ewell, Burris's father, was permitted to hunt and trap out of season.